think I want to just, for a few minutes, back up and, and we, we, we can look at maybe the big picture. Because God has been, he's been doing such a, a, a tremendous work of preparing us for this. You know, when, when God, one of the reasons he announces things 20, 30 years or more in advance is because he's about to begin a process and he's going to need us to cooperate with him in that process. And so I've said several times in the last few months that he has done more to us in the last 40 years than through us, the church, at least in America. When, when the charismatic movement and the Jesus people movement subsided, we went back into this season where God was doing an internal work in the church to prepare us for what he's about to do. And he's been working diligently to do that. When we came through the charismatic movement, the Jesus people movement, the outpouring of the 60s, the 70s, uh, when we started into that movement, all we had at leading the church were, were pastors and evangelists. The only time you heard anybody talk about a teacher was Sunday school. There was no understanding of the, of the ministry gift, or some would call it office, a gift of, of teacher. But it exploded in the charismatic movement emphasis on the word and Bible schools were raised up and God literally restored in a probably a 10 year period uh, one of the ministry gifts of Christ in a very strong way to the church but he didn't slow down because then he started on the prophet and our only concept of prophecy when I grew up in the charismatic and Pentecostal churches I was in was somebody could come in and if the spirit so moved them they could do an exhortive, comforting sort of, you know, the Lord loves you and it's going to be okay word. But nothing at the level that we're moving in now with prophets and prophecy. and there's, God didn't just raise up prophets. He raised up a prophetic church, which is the goal. He doesn't want just evangelists. He wants a church that evangelizes. He doesn't just want a pastor. He wants a caring group of people that is pastoral, that's evangelistic, that is a teaching group of people, a, a training group of people. And he doesn't just want prophets, he wants people that can hear him. He speaks, he talks. So, you know, 40 years ago when I sat in a home group in the uh, late 70s in a circle, you know, it was pretty radical for somebody to say, the Lord spoke to me today and told me this, and we'd all go, whoa, Really? I don't know if I believe that. And now it's common. It's like, sure, what did he say? God spoke to me in my prayer time. Oh, yeah, what did he say? I mean, God has developed a people. It's not the, whole, the entire church, of course, but he's developed a prophetic people. If you were in a prayer circle, if, if I had you get in 10 different groups of 20 or 30 people and you're all in a circle praying, it would, be, it would be nothing for someone to say, I just heard the Lord we're supposed to pray this verse, or I'm supposed to decree this verse, or I feel we're supposed to do this. That's all prophetic. So over a 10-year or so period, a, another anointing of Christ from the Ephesians 4 ministry gifts and anointings of Jesus was restored to the church. And I, I remember going through it myself. And people start telling me I'm a prophet, but I thought, I don't know, I'm a prophet. And I finally came to the conclusion, I'm just prophetic like a lot of people. I'm prophetic. But he wasn't finished. Then he started focusing on the apostles. And that really stretched a lot of people. But the Lord just did it anyway, and now there's, a, there's a, a remnant of the church that understands fully the apostolic anointing of Christ, the governmental anointing, the establishing anointing and gift of Christ. 
And I'm saying all that to say that after those gifts are mentioned in Ephesians 4, he starts talking about what they will do. And one of the things he mentions is that once once all of these are functioning, or when they're all functioning, you can reveal the fullness of Christ. These are the five anointings or gifts. The way I describe this is Jesus broke himself down into five anointings and gave them to the church. If you have two of them, you can represent 40% of it. If you have three of them, you could do 60%. If you have four of them, you could do 80%. But the church for the first time in probably many centuries, maybe a couple of thousand years, is walking in, or at least an element of the church, is walking in the fullness of Christ. For the first time, I believe, since probably the early church waned in their movement, we have the ability, the potential, to fully reveal Christ in the earth. This is why nations will, will be transformed. This is why the miraculous is about to break out in ways we've never seen. This is why evangelism is going to break out in, in ways where it's not just a stadium where a couple, three or four thousand people get saved. It's going to be a city where half a million get saved. You're going to hear reports of entire nations being transformed. There are nations that are called Muslim nations today that will be called Christian nations 10 years from now. Because we are positioned to do this. So, so the Lord announces he's going to do something, not telling us this will be 30 years from now. But he has a reason for that. He's preparing us, and he needs us to persevere toward it. But when he says it's time, when he knows the harvest is ready, because you know, people, until they get to a certain level of desperation, often just won't return to the Lord. But that level of desperation is about to hit a point. It already has, probably. The hunger level has hit a point where people are ready and desperate for hope and change. And God is going to use that. And he, so he has a people ready, and he has a harvest ready. And it's all coming together now. So what does that mean for us? That means we're about to go into another season of great change. 